BBC Four Kids is proud to present the Psalms. Psalm 22 My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me and from the words of my groaning? Oh, my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not hear, and in the night season, and am not silent. But you are holy, enthroned in the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted in you. They trusted, and you delivered them. They cried to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not ashamed. But I am a worm and no man, a reproach of men and despised by the people. All who see me ridicule me. They shoot out the lip. They shake the head, saying, He trusted in the Lord. Let him rescue him. Let him deliver him, since he delights in him. But you are he who took me out of the womb. You made me trust while on my mother's breasts. I was cast from you from birth, from my mother's womb. You have been my God. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, for there is none to help. Many bulls have surrounded me. Strong bulls of Bashan have encircled me. They gape at me with their mouths like a raging and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax, it has melted within me. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue clings to my jaws. You have brought me to the dust of death, for dogs have surrounded me. The congregation of the wicked has enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They look and stare at me. They divide my garments among them, and my clothing they cast for lots. But you, O Lord, do not be far from me. O my strength, hasten to help me. Deliver me from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth and from the horns of the wild oxen. You have answered me. I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, glorify him. And fear him, all you offspring of Israel. For he has not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, nor has he hidden his face from him. But when he cried to him, he heard. My praise shall be of you in the great assembly. I will pay my vows before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him will praise the Lord. Let your heart live forever. At the ends of the world, remember and return to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall worship before you, for the kingdom is the Lord's, and he rules over the nations. All the prosperous of the earth shall eat and worship. All those who go down to the dust shall bow before him, even he who cannot keep himself alive. A posterity shall serve him. It will be recounted of the Lord to the next generation. They will come and declare his righteousness to a people who will be born that he has done this. Psalm 22 is what we call a messianic psalm. That means that it's a psalm that's prophesying about the Messiah. Uh, If that sounds confusing, well, these psalms, messianic psalms, are prophecy about Jesus and his life and death. Psalm 22 is about a time when David, who wrote this psalm, was struggling in his life, and God also used the words David wrote during his hard time to tell us what Jesus was going to go through in the future. For example, when Jesus was dying on the cross, he said the first verse of this psalm to express the pain he was going through. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This is often how God uses prophecy in the Old Testament. He uses the examples, circumstances, and writings of people in the Old Testament to tell us what he would do in the future with Jesus. 
The first two verses of Psalm 22 are David crying out to God at a time when he was in great agony. But then, even in David's great time of difficulty, he remembers that God is holy and has helped his people in the past in verses 3 to 5. Then verses 6 to 8 show how David was treated by people. And again, God used this to show how Jesus would be treated too. Both David and Jesus were despised by men, and both were taunted by people who said, He trusts in the Lord, let God rescue him. At different times, both men's faith was made fun of by other people around them. Even in this time where his life is very hard, David remembers that God can still help him. God has been with him before he was born, so he will not abandon him now. Verses 12 to 17 are all about the agony that David feels like he's going through, and then later Jesus went through. This section describes many of the things that happen when someone is crucified on a cross, and Jesus would have gone through all of them before his death. But David, who was writing this psalm, would not have understood what crucifixion was. And so these passages were prophecy from God. David ends this section with another plea for help and deliverance from God. And then the second half of this psalm is praising God for helping David in his suffering. David says he will declare God to everyone around him. God does not ignore those who are suffering, and he hears their cries for help. We can be sure that God is always with us, no matter what we're going through, and he will answer our cries for help. We have a faithful God who is worthy of all the praise that we can give him. He sent his son Jesus to go through many horrible things to save us from our sins, all because he cares for us and he loves us. We should be happy to praise and worship such a wonderful God. Psalm Songs with the Psalm Song Guy. about it with Pastor Daniel. So Messianic Psalms are where God used the author's writings to prophesy about Jesus. God told us the future through these Psalms. He had the psalmists write predictions about the life of the Messiah, Jesus. In Psalm 22, the things that David wrote were all things that happened to Jesus when he went and died on the cross. And as we read the Messianic Psalms, there's something really important that we should notice and then learn from. Every single prophecy, promise, or prediction about the life of the Messiah that you can find in the Psalms and really the entire Old Testament, they all came true. Maybe as you've been watching the video today, you've been thinking, well, that's cool and all that this was about David and then about Jesus too, but what does that have to do with my life? And that's a great question. And the answer is that prophecy helps us to understand that God always keeps his promises. God set a pattern of making promises, predictions, and prophecies in the Old Testament and then making every single one of them come true in the New Testament. And when we study these prophecies and we begin to see how everyone comes true time after time after time after time again, 
well then we really begin to understand just how trustworthy God's word and his promises are. And that's really good news because God's promised us some really amazing things. God's promised to forgive our sins when we believe in Jesus. He's promised that he'll always be with us no matter what we're going through, as David saw in Psalm 22. He's promised us eternal life and much, much more. So for today's Think About It, why don't you read these Bible verses that are going up on the screen? Find a Bible and read each one of these promises from God, or ask someone to read them to you. And then, as you're reading them, remember that God keeps his promises, just like we learned today from the prophecies in Psalm 22. Thanks for watching FFBC for Kids. Come back next week for our last video in the Psalms before we take a little summer break for the month of August. We'll see you then. Bye!